Hey guys, uh, welcome to the first video of Stormworks. In this episode, we're gonna try the survival mode and we have the option Advanced Vehicle enabled. So that can be quite challenging, but let's go for it. First, we're gonna generate a new game. We have the game mode on career, Advanced Vehicles, Vehicle damage, player damage, damage, sharks, and of course the limited fuel. Increase the starting money a little bit, make it a bit easier. And I want to play on summertime. Oh, so doesn't take that long the nights because the nights are quite annoying. <laughs> so let's go for it. And okay. So oh, we're now in our little cabin. Looks nice and cozy. We're not gonna stay here. We need to go to the harbor and build our first ship. We actually have to go down here. Don't fall off the stairs. Don't fall off the stairs, of course. And this is a little area where we can spawn our boat. We have a limited fuel tank. So if this if this goal is empty, then we're fucked. <laughs> so we actually have to make a ship that can uh, refuel this. So let's go to a workbench. And we have a lot of options here. Uh, a very important option is the symmetry. So I'm going to turn this on the x-axis. So if you place a block like this, it will be copied to the other side. Also, the direction arrows is a very handy feature. So, well, let's go. Uh, luckily, there's a Control Z button. So, if you mess anything up, it would be a real problem. So, first, let's make this a little bit longer. So, let's get some wedges and drag them. Uh, let's do the same thing for the pyramid first. And let's also extend the floor a little bit. And it finishes it all off with some white on the side. As long as the boxes will touch each other, you don't have to worry about any water going through. Now let's move everything a little bit to the front with the move tool. And let's use some blocks to finish off the back. And since the last few updates, the extra blocks will disappear automatically. Which is awesome. So if you remove this wedge and place that top on the ship, we can actually test if this floats. And damn, this floats well. It's almost a skipping ball. <laughs> so yeah, we need to make this more stable. And to do that is uh, like uh, increasing the weight of it, especially on the back. So yeah, let's take it back to the workbench. So let's open a little area so we can have uh, easier access. And we're gonna place the engine here. There is an easy way to place the engine with the ports upwards. The way to do that is create a plane with 3x3 blocks and then place the engine against that. As you can see we have all the in and outputs pointing to the top and the power facing the rear of the ship. And after that it's okay to clear the 9 blocks we have placed before. As you can see there are 5 ports on top and if you select a pipe you can see what you need on that port. Let's first take a look at the coolant. The coolant out uh, needs to be dumped into the sea and the coolant in you can actually take from the sea. And after that we have the fuel port, the exhaust and the air intake. And then the last thing is our output of the engine and we can directly connect that to our propeller. So let's open the erase tool by clicking it or pressing X and we're gonna open two holes in the bottom of the ship for the fluid ports. And in this case I'm gonna mark them blue so I know it's cold water from the sea. Don't forget to turn off the symmetry mode otherwise both pipes will be blue. So now let's place our first pipes. Um, the turning is a bit of a struggle in the beginning and actually always in the game. You can turn it by pressing J, K or L and you can drag and drop them often. Um, at the bottom you place a fluid port that will actually work as an intake and out. 
So now we're color coding the hot water from the engine to red, so we know this is the hot water pipe. And the next thing we will connect is the exhaust. And let's make that dark gray. And at the top level of the ship we have to make sure that we use an enclosed pipe so we won't uh, have any leakage inside the ship. Now we're going to do the same thing for the air intake. Uh, it's always very important to keep the air intake above the water level. There are many ways to get a fuel tank in Stormworks. You can build one yourself or just place one from the inventory. The plus side of the standard fuel tanks is that they have a built-in fluid meter. When you build a custom tank you have to insert a fluid meter yourself and in early game you don't have enough resource points so you actually have to do a mission before you can build a fluid meter so yeah you can use your fluid tank but you will never know how much is inside making a fuel tank is actually pretty easy we only have to remove a wedge so we can have a tight seal and fill it up with boxes if you have researched the fluid spawner, you can actually do a test if your ship will hold up that much fuel. But for now we don't, so we make a hole in the fuel tank and connect a fuel port to it. And make sure those ribbons are inside of the tank. For a small ship like this, one fuel port would be enough. If you have a larger fuel tank, make sure you have four ports on every corner and attach a fuel pump to it. Otherwise, you will not be able to pump all the fuel out. And I'm now finishing off the last pieces of pipes and the fuel would be good to go. In this tutorial, we won't get into the clutches and gearboxes, so we can actually hook up the propeller directly to the engine. The disadvantage of this, the ship will actually use up more fuel and we won't be able to go in reverse. So if you want to know how to reverse your ship, click here for the next video. To learn everything about reverse. Once we have placed the propeller we can connect it up to the engine. So now we've added some weight we're gonna close this up and test how it floats and maybe add some weight blocks later. It seems to be floating really well but maybe some weight blocks in the in the back so the nose will go a little bit higher. I think that would be perfect. But first, before I forget, some fluid ports for the air intake and the exhaust. And since we're working on fluid ports, let's not forget about the fuel intake. So let's make a hole in the fuel tank and put a fuel port in there. And make sure that you place the correct fluid port with the rounded cone on top. But since this fluid port will be above the tank, so it will most likely not drain the tank. So we can fix that by placing a T-piece between the pipes of the lower port. And let's connect that to the fluid connector on top of the ship. And if you're wondering what the pink box was, that's our center of mass. If you place a weight block in the ship, it will change automatically. So let's fill up the deck again. And let's now place the battery inside the ship. It's better to do this in the far back of the ship because we, we, we could use the extra weight over there. So now we only have to place the seat and the rudder and connect everything up. This time I will go for the standard driver seat because it will have a few more options. Now let's make a ladder to get off and on the ship easier. We can do that by erasing uh, at least three blocks wide of the side of the ship and place a ladder and drag it to the deck. Let's now place some buttons. The important thing about the buttons, we have a toggle button and a push button. The push button is only once and the toggle button will stay on. So for the engine start you will have a push button and for your lights example you want a toggle button to keep the lights on. When you place a toggle button on your engine, well your battery will be drained in a few seconds. The dials are an easy and quick way to show data and let's place a few. If you can't get the arrow in the correct position, you can also use the invert buttons U, I or O. So let's now place two levers. One will be for the clutch in the next tutorial and the other one will be the throttle. Make sure you have the filled blue arrow to the top, otherwise it will be inverted. 
So let's now place the two buttons. Make sure to turn off the symmetry mode because one button will be a toggle button and the other one will be a push button. It's important to name your buttons. You can do this with the select tool and then you can fill in the name you would like. And let's do this for the throttle as well. So we're almost ready for the wiring, but let's first create a rudder. It's very important when you place a rudder, you're not in symmetry mode, otherwise they will be interfering with each other. And again, make sure that your filled blue arrow is pointing on the right. If it's not, you can turn that with a U, I or O key. So now let's place a few pyramids to make it a little bit more nicer. Uh, let's now place the generator so we can actually recharge your batteries. It's pretty easy by just uh, putting a T-piece on your power line from the engine and attach the generator on that. And now it's time to enter the logic system. As you can see we have a lot of circles. Uh, this is the data tab and we also got the electric tab. But for now we're gonna start with the data tab and we are gonna look for the green dot on the throttle and connect it to the throttle of the engine. After that, we're gonna use the push button for the on off switch of the engine. So that will work. The engine has two sensors inside, one for the temperature and one for the RPS. And let's connect the RPS to the dial on the right. And let's do the temperature on the dial just below that one. And let's put the battery level on the dial as well. We don't have to connect up both batteries because they will drain equally. Only one data connection is left and that will be the rudder. And you can attach that to your chair. In this case I'm gonna, for, I'm gonna go for the AMD key. But you could also use the arrows for that. We will do the electric tap in a moment. But first let's decorate the ship a little bit better. Uh, we actually want a bat on the ship, so we can skip storms and nights if we if we need to. And the next thing will be some chairs for the passengers. Uh, for some missions, you could have like over five passengers, so plenty of seats will be welcome. After that, we're gonna make it uh, look a little bit nicer with placing some wedges and stuff. Now it's time for the electric stuff. I always do this at the last moment so we don't forget anything. And we're gonna go from the generator to the batteries. And the batteries will connect everything else. And the easiest way to do this is by holding the control key. And then you can just tap every connection. And you don't have to drag and drop it all the time. Since we have connected everything, let's do a floating test. And let's see if it needs extra weights. And the back is still pretty high in the water, so I think I'm just gonna add a few more weight blocks in the far back. I think this should be enough. Well, let's test it again and let's take a look. Oh, it's way more heavy on the back, but actually, when it's laying still in the water, it's, it's actually perfect. So, let's fuel it up. Don't forget to turn off the winch, otherwise your battery could be drained when you come back. When the winch length is far enough, we can take the connector and just jump on the ship. Fluid connectors are a bit derpy, so it might be a struggle for you in the beginning, but you will get used to it. And as we can see, the fuel level is decreasing a bit on the fuel board, so we're actually fueling our ship up, which is awesome. And we only need a little bit of fuel for this test, so let's take the hose and dump it in the water. And let's start this bad boy. You can enter the seat by pressing F. And so we need a bit of throttle. And then we can start the engine. We only have to push once and maybe yeah, it's working. We're going forward. Awesome. So the rudder is also working, you can go to the left now, so let's increase the throttle and, well, let's just go for it. <laughs> and it's it's actually pretty nice in the water. It's a bit wobbly, but uh, we also don't have a lot of fuel on us right now, so so yeah, this is it. This is a basic boat, it's uh, pretty cheap, pretty fast, and you can hold a lot of fuel in it. 
so you can actually use it for selling fuel early game in the next video we're going to set up a clutch a gearbox so we can actually reverse and we're also going to get our first research points and research a fluid meter so we actually know how much fuel is inside because this boat can run for hours or it can only last a few minutes we don't we don't know that yet so have fun building this ship and if you have any questions uh, just drop it below in the comments and i will answer that and if you like this video, like and subscribe and see you guys next time.